What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Cloak to Grandmaster. I took about a two-month break of this extra Grandmaster series, but now we're going to start back up again, and I'm very excited. I'm also going to be starting probably two new series, so look forward to that. For now, our MMR is, I think, 4.6k. I don't exactly remember where we left off, but let's do it. All right, first game of the day is going to be against the 5k MMR Pro. Also, right, so I guess our MMR was a little higher than I thought. Just so you guys know, 5k MMR is already in the Grandmaster range. He just doesn't have enough games, so that is uh, yeah, pretty good or pretty bad news for us because I do still need to warm up. Now, I do kind of remember how I used to play. I remember it was always a very big mix of... Widow Mines and Banshees mostly followed by Ghosts later with a lot of nukes, and the hard part was trying to figure out whether I should make mines, banshees, or ghosts early on. I mean, that's pretty much... Is that all the units I'm allowed to make? I think so, right? I mean, typically I open with one Reaper 5 Marines to just not die to like one Zealot or something, and then I'll go into those units. But I think Widow Mines, Ghost, and Banshees, unless I'm mistaken, are the units I'm allowed to build. Now, the biggest problem, I mean, I, I'm sure I talked about it many times in these past episodes, which you guys probably have forgotten already because it's been a while. But the biggest problem playing against Protoss is always those early blink attacks. So what build can I possibly do that's decent against it? My first instinct is to open with a lot of Widow Mines and try to put on pressure. I don't think Widow Mines are necessarily a good unit against Blink Stalkers, but they can throw the game in chaos and prevent those attacks from hitting at the right timing, right? I can use my multitasking. This map admittedly not the best for it. I wonder, and this sounds really crazy to say, but it might even be a more legit strategy than it should be. To fly a factory in the opponent's base. Ooh, I wasn't even... I definitely need to warm up. I didn't even see that probe. I was kind of looking at the minimap, but I didn't see it. Good thing I was saved by the RNG. But I think it could be a decent strategy to lift... The, ooh, he's not paying attention. Oh my goodness, what? Okay. I mean, that's a good start. <laughs> that's really not supposed to happen. He's going to be kicking himself for that. But flying the factory into someone's base, making cloaked with mines on a lot of maps is smart. And is maybe going to give me the distraction that you need to get Banshees up. I also think it might be good to go for Reactor Factory early because then I suppose I could just... I mean, I have this crazy idea in my head, right? Like, imagine I have two Widow Mines and they're so fast that my opponent didn't expect them. I run them around the gateway unit that they usually send across and then I just click them into his base. I could even make an armory behind it too. I do think going for particularly fast... Um, yeah, just units in general that I can use is a good idea because... If I go for like a fast expand and then I need to defend the blink attack without having put pressure on myself, that just feels like a bit of a disaster. Now there's no proxy to be found around my base, that's nice. I'm gonna expand on the high ground because I haven't made a single marine. And this is when I'm considering adding on that armory. It's, it just feels a little absurd, but I guess that is my thing. Let's see, can I make the starboard first maybe? See, I think I can afford a star. Ooh, okay, well that is... I feel like that changes everything. My opponent did not expand. He's on one base. That is actually terrifying because what am I... So it's two gates, huh? I mean, two gates doesn't... That's not the best way to start an all-in by Protoss, I want to say. Like, if you really want to go for a one base all-in, you should start on one gate so you can actually afford your tech. If you go for two gate, I would more expect you to just expand behind it but i don't see the expansion and now thank goodness i made widow mines instead of hellions i mean i know i'm not allowed to make hellions but hellions here oh my god he lost a stalker already oh no please don't you saw it man okay it, thank, I, I was i was kind of rooting for him there because that would have been so ridiculous if he lost that freaking stalker to the widow mine as well really good micro bam i have to say i'm gonna have to pull this widow mine back here we go now what is he gonna do after this is this going to be like a war prism or i'm 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 not quite sure i have to say like it feels a little bit weird of a strategy like i mentioned to go two gate and then go for one base all in after so now i'm gonna start making banshees i think the only thing that i cannot defeat here i mean that that includes having a lot of luck is probably blink stalkers right like stargate i mean i'm not even sure if i would be too upset about it with all these freaky widow wise that i have right i think that would even be okay against the robo it will be difficult but then the banshees are going to be particularly effective but blink it's just extremely good at dodging widow mines like what you can do with blink stalkers is just walk in here and as soon as the widow mine should blink back sounds like a very advanced micro technique which i guess it kind of is but at the same time it's also not that difficult i'm gonna set one banshee across the map i'm making a second starport as well just because i think I, I mean, he's already in front of my base. Like, if I move out with a bunch of Widow Mines, he is going to know how to counter that, I'm afraid. I'm going to put this here. Let's see. How many Stalkers is it going to be? Time for me to check. 
And maybe I can surround wait, he's not paying attention. I could surround him actually. Oh wait, am I I think I got the cut off? Oh I did! Look! <laughs> that was actually very, very funny. Okay, let's see. I'm just gonna burrow Widowmine everywhere. Let's see if he can escape. Show us those micro skills, Mr. Protoss. Oh, okay, he's going here. <laughs> Is that, this is so freaking stupid, actually. Okay, I think we got him boxed in now, guys. There we go. Well played, guys. We did it. Success. <laughs> not, not bad job by him to micro out of that, by the way. Like, that really could have died a lot faster. Now, let's see. So, the expansion must be down right there. Okay, so he did expand. It was just maybe a little later than I expected. Now, the Banshee's in his base, which uh, he clearly wasn't prepared for. We, we could be going up against DTs. And I say that because there's just a suspicious lack of things. Not even anything in particular. There, there's just, there's just nothing, right? There's one stalker now. Okay, he does have an observer. The observer coming from there. Uh, I couldn't quite tell if that observer came from the right angle. To uh, that means that the robo's in the base, or if he actually proxied it. I couldn't tell that. But I'm really happy to see a robo anyway. Like that's way better than a stargate for me now, because at this point I've committed to playing, uh, you know, double starport banshee. I think that's barely gonna survive unless he has blink. Let's see. Okay, no blink yet. That is also good news for us. He's going to keep trying to chase me. I don't think he can catch these anymore, though. Let's see. Pull this one back. I think I'm going to start getting a group of two Banshees. It's very, very unusual for Terran to make more than two Banshees, by the way. I feel like two Banshees is... I want to say 90% of the time Terran makes Banshees, they'll make two. Because it's just... It makes sense to get two. They one-shot probes and, you know... One Banshee feels kind of useless a lot of the time, but two feels pretty good. But then making more than that just means you never get to make Medivacs or Ravens or maybe even Viking, stuff like that, right? So I think two uh, is what he's going to... Or what he was expecting, and he saw them. But I don't think he's going to expect three and four. It, it, it is possible, though, that he will just blind counter Banshee movement, right? Like, if, if I was him, for example, what I would do is I would just get a couple Stalkers... Oh, okay. Get a couple Stalkers in each base. Okay, so now he's trying to break my stuff over here. I think I could probably do a decent job against this with my Banshees, but his Micro is definitely going to be at least decent. Yeah, exactly. So he does have a couple Stalkers in each base. There's no there's no Observer here, actually. That is quite comfortable for me. I'm not even paying attention at the front because I'm doing more damage here than uh, he is to be, which is really great. Look at this. And now I'm sure he pulled the Observer back. At least I hope for him he did, else I would be kind of disappointed. So now I can go in here. Let's see how are my SCVs doing. Maybe, no, it's not. I was going to say maybe it's the right time to pull them back, but these are doing so freaking well. And now he's losing probes over here. Well, maybe I can go into the main now and kind of squash the squad of uh, stalkers that he has over here. Oh, it sucks for me that the low HP banshees were in the front. Look at this. This is actually so cool. Battery overcharge is activated. I'm not going to be able to kill that. Hopefully I can keep these alive. And my supply... Doesn't my supply look insane? 96? I would have imagined that I lost most of my stuff, but I really didn't lose that much at all. So I'm just going to keep making Banshees. Probably go for another starport here. Let me check with his SCV if he has a third base or not. There's a couple star... Okay, that looks like he has a third base, right? Why else would he be standing in front of that? Maybe it's time to go for, like, Ghost. Not for nukes this time, but really just to... Oh, he has stalkers there. Crap. I, I saw so many stalkers move out, I thought we were safe. These are probably stuck. Oh, they, they are safe, though. That's nice. I, I kind of thought at least a couple of those were going to die. Okay, now I'm going to walk in there. I do have my planetary up already. And yeah, there is a third... Oh my god, this is a really big uh, army of widow mines. Now I'm going to send more banshees over here. I do have a lot. At some point, I might be able to overpower his stalkers. One thing I do have to be afraid of is... Uh, that he could still go for phoenixes. Like, phoenixes are so good against banshees like they just like one of them will kill all of them like so fast it's pretty crazy now here i have a planetary which is super comfortable for me let's see what he has over there maybe i can uh send these into the natural now unseen he's going for a fourth base uh, so he is pretty well prepared for the macro game here we go look how many banshees i have here this is beautiful he does have a lot of stalkers on the high ground which i need to be careful for but i'm just gonna go to uh the low ground here and kill this nexus now the planetary is just never gonna die to stalkers in fact it looked like he even lost a bunch of stalkers trying to attack the planetary or realistically i don't think he was trying to attack it but he was just kind of preoccupied with the other stuff and this is massive we killed so many probes i'm not gonna lie i thought we were in a better spot than we were but then i saw how many freaking bases he actually had and i realized our position was not quite that great the widow mines have been a little disappointing uh which is you know to be expected i don't want to 
you know, talk talk mad shit about my win and mines, but maybe they're not the right unit for the situation here. But now, oh, watch this. Oh, it does so much damage to the stalkers. Wait, now, I have enough banshees. Guys, he doesn't have enough stalkers here. And they're too slow because they already blink. Look at this. Oh my god, this is beautiful. This is Terran art. And we have beaten the 5k Protoss in our first game back. And I'm very happy with this one now. I do have to say, our opponent's strategy was a little strange. I am wondering... No, he didn't even take the third first. But judging by how this game went, I was like, maybe he took the third base first. And then maybe the natural later. But his expansion was just very late. And yeah, I mean, we beat the 5k Protoss, but I think we got a little bit lucky for the strategy. Anyway, fantastic warm-up game. Let's keep it going. Second game of the day is against the Terran. And there is our MMR, 4736. We're playing on Neo Humanity. Now, cloaked against Terran, if, I mean, I, I should probably already know this, judging that this is, I think this is episode number six or seven or something like that, but it's just since it's been a while, I don't remember, but playing against Terran should be the most difficult, mostly because ghosts are, you know, I was going to say not that good against Terran. <clears throat> Realistically, they're, they're awful, though. They're horrible against Terran nukes. They, they've popped off. I mean, they've had some absolutely delicious nukes against Terran before, but besides that... You know, even being orbitals, I guess, is a move that we have, but there's really just not that much to do. Now against Terran, especially on this map, it would probably be a lot smarter to go for that fast expansion, because early early Widow Mines are good against Terran, admittedly. Early Widow Mines are pretty good. But I feel like I do need four gases, you know? I need a lot of gas very fast, so I can maybe go for, like, double port Banshee and spread... Wi oh, that is one thing that I'm very looking forward to, spreading Widow Mines across the map. Like, Widow Mines, trust me, guys. They're not a popular unit for macro games against Terran, but there are some mech Terrans in Europe that kind of specialize in the mine mech. And I kind of adopted it at some point in my pro career, and it's so much fun. Like, the TVT pretty much always ends up being tanks, Vikings, and Ravens, right? And some, you know, some accessories like Marines or Liberators or whatever. But tank, Vikings, and Ravens are, uh, yeah, really just the core of that. So if you have like a couple of random widow mines, sometimes they'll shoot a Viking and kill it. Sometimes they'll shoot a Raven and damage the whole group. It's just, it's horribly annoying to play against. And that is, you know, I'm looking forward to inflicting that onto my opponents. And let's see what we're playing against first here. Um, I could. Let's see, how do I want to do this? So, I'm going to go for one mine expand, I think. Well, actually, I'm going to make the expansion before the Widow Mine. I think that's the way the economy is going to work. Besides that, I'm not going to make many units. Our opponent is probably playing double gas as well. Though it does scare me a little bit that he walled off quickly. Because that could mean we're going to go up against two racks Reaper. So, this is what I really love about this map. That's why it's a good idea to expand early. You can block this Reaper jump with just one building. Like, literally... They're, I mean, they could mine out the gold patches if they're very creative, but besides that, that's the only way into my base now via this natural. And then if I put some Widow Mines here, even just one, we should be pretty safe. I mean, sometimes the opponents can be a little crazy. Uh, probably learn that for me if they watch my channel or not, that being crazy is good. Don't take that lesson away, guys. Or maybe you should. But if they run past my Widow Mine, I'm not actually going to have that many units to defend. But most likely the Widow Mine is just going to deter them. At least I would hope so. Then I'm going to go for the starport. I do want to play double port Banshee here. I ideally, I end up having nukes, but I really don't think I can afford that until I'm at least settled on like... I want to say maybe even four bases. Like normally I would say three, but maybe even four bases, you know? Okay, so I'm going to move out with the Reaper, I think. Like keep in mind, I can always put a secondary line of defense here. Like even if he runs past the Widow Mine... I can sacrifice this momentarily and put another Widow Mine here that's gonna... You know, let, let's say they move in with three units. Maybe that's already enough to deal with everything. So, not really too worried at this point. I think we're pretty safe. Unless we're playing as, like, one base siege tank push or something, then I might cry. Let's see. Okay. This looks relatively normal, I think. Let's see. Yeah, the expansion is going down. Look, Yeah, it was just a double gas opener. Maybe he did make three units. I feel like three units sounds like a reasonable amount, uh, judging what he had over there. Three units obviously meaning... Two Reapers and one Hellion. Could have been less as well. Oh, there we go. There's all the units. Yo, that's a cool surround, by the way. I, I don't think that was necessarily on purpose, but it looked very cool, though. Like, the one Reaper from up here, one Reaper from downtown, and then the Hellion just chilling in the alley over there. That was pretty cool. All right. So, I'm slightly worried about the setup here. 
mostly because he's not committing. I feel like a lot of the times where I get the advantage... Oh, that! how did that not shoot? Oh my god, that guy has some sick units. Oh, he's gonna sacrifice the Hellion for it. Yeah, they do like doing that. Look, and now I have the secondary hit of Widow Mine. A couple Marine hits? No, oh, good response by him. Yeah, so far he's doing a good job with these. He traded one Hellion uh, to get in there. That's a pretty good move. Let's see, is he gonna micro well enough to get past this? It's gonna be pretty tough, I have to say. I got the Banshee coming out too. But yeah, the situation is definitely a little scary. I, I don't know. I feel like I kind of like this, and I'm crazy for saying this, but the thing is here, guys, is Cyclone is in my base, which means my Banshee is going to go absolutely insane on his base in a little bit. I had to cancel my third, which is realistically just 100 minerals, right? He's doing his best microing here, too. <gasps> a, a Widowmine one-shots a Cyclone, by the way, guys, just so you know. That's a very important aspect of this. A Widowmine one-shots a Cyclone, so if he walks like a little too far forward, he could be in a massive amount of trouble. I'm going to cut off his retreatment path over here. There we go. And now I have the Banshee in his base. He does have a little scan safe, so that is something... Wait, did I just... No, okay, for a second I thought I killed the Cyclone, but here, I don't think he has a Cyclone there, guys. Look at this. He's gonna lose so many freaking workers to this. I saw him move his units back, and I think just this Banshee is gonna do an absolutely incredible amount of damage. The Raven is here. Detection is great, guys, but if you don't have units to actually kill the thing, does it really matter? No, he's still pushing me. Okay, so there's a Siege Tank now. That is pretty scary. I do feel like he pulled the Cyclone back, which means that now my second Banshee is gonna wreak havoc on his units on the front. There we go. The, ba oh, the Cyclone, he's not paying attention to it right now. He he could lose it. Oh my god. Oh, the lock on? He's not microing it though, I think. Oh yeah, the lock on got broken. That's beautiful. Maybe? Wait, it would be... No, I don't think I can. I want him to hide in the corner, but I don't think it's the best idea. I think I'll just grab a couple more workers. Three more. 15 kills on that Banshee in the end, guys. Oh my god. Yo, I'm not gonna lie. I wasn't paying attention at all to this command center burning. Like, th th this could have died. It it's happened to me before. I I've always been embarrassed, but it's definitely happened to me before that I'm like, oh, I, I didn't expect him to attack my base instead of trying to kill the units or whatever <laughs> so uh, yeah i should have been really careful with that okay let's put the widow mines a little bit more forward and then i got two more banshees attacking his base and this is the kind of stuff that's just i i really enjoy it because the situation looks a little rough but at the same time i always have like one of these tricks up my sleeve and then since they don't pay attention for a little bit they can actually get wrecked by just one banshee here and now I have two Banshees. If he doesn't have Vikings, I don't I don't think he's going to be able to do anything. Again. Okay, he does have a Viking. Has, I'm actually happy for him because that would have been so painful if he didn't. Five more SCVs going down. Maybe I can kill the... No, I don't think it's... That would be a little bit too psycho. I was thinking about diving for it for a second because it's just so important. Um, oh, he, he could chase me down with the Cyclone, I think. Cyclones are probably fast enough. At least he's paying attention there. I'm going to start getting some turrets up. Keep in mind, I don't have consistent anti-air, right? The Cyclone is not here yet. Okay. Wait, where's the Cyclone at? Oh, I just... Lo I was wondering why it wasn't turning into a planetary, but it's because I loaded in the SUVs. One thing that's really funny is the first time I did that, I got a ton of comments like, oh, you thermal dust that too. Thank God. I thought I was the only one. No, that that, that happens all the time. Instead of making a planetary, you, you load your SUVs into the command center. I don't know. It's... It's tough, guys, okay? It's tough. Now, I have a lot of Widow Mines. These are not going to be super good at defending my base. That's unfortunate. I think I can actually click a few of these across the map. Maybe this would have been a good time to go for the Ghost with the Nuke. Okay, so he sees the Widow Mines. He's like he's going to use an SCP for them, even though there's clearly a million Widow Mines there. Okay, another Marine. Another one? <laughs> he could have just sieged the tank, you know? I, I think he probably just, he was getting a little impatient. I think he just wanted to get it over with, but there was uh, more there than he realized. There we go. The tank is now sieged. I think it's in range of... Yeah, exactly. It was in range of those two. Now, I do have a couple widow mines here. I'm going to burrow one widow mine a little bit further back. And the point of that one is that it can maybe kill the cyclone when it gets back. At least I think the cyclone... Yeah, the cyclone is still alive. Now, I have so many freaking hit, random hidden widow mines here. I'm going to start making some more turrets as well. What you want to do in this situation is make it as difficult as possible for your opponent to break you. Because at some point, they're going to get impatient. They're not going to be looking at their army, right? And then you can grab the opportunity to maybe get more kills with your Widow Mines than you should kind of thing. So you always want to make these random turrets and put like random Widow Mines everywhere. There we go. There's a Reaper. Maybe there, the Raven is going to get hit. Exactly. This exa oh, I'm so happy. I got proven right instantly. Two Ravens going down to the random turrets. And that means that the detection here is gone. I'm going to snipe the Cyclone. And that's going to be pretty much his last anti-air, guys. Marines, I always say it. They are absolutely awful against Banshees. You can scan, but Marines just don't have the firepower or the kite. Ability. He's going to drop a couple turrets, probably. He does have a few more Vikings in the back. 
I'm gonna use those Widowmines Burr. Maybe I can catch them. That's oh, oh, that almost shot. That was so close. I think it's probably a decent choice for me to just YOLO uh, on the tanks here. Oh, that was really good auto turrets, Bam. I didn't see that one coming. That's my bad. Lost two Banshees there, but obviously we have done enough. And the Terran goes down. And you can tell, despite a lot of right moves, it is a very, very difficult game. We did so much damage with the one Banshee early on, but still, you need to be so careful against this army. The turrets and Widow Mines did the trick, and obviously the three Banshees on his side of the map, it just killed everything. Like, he has 26 supply left, 46 worker skills. Beautiful game. Let's go to game number three. Our third game of the day is against another Protoss player called Zeller. All right. Now, did I like the way I played that first game against the Protoss? I mean, I find it incredibly hard to judge just because the game was so freaking weird. I, I do think uh, I was talking about the Flying Factory, right, at the start against Protoss. This is not a map where you can do it, mostly because uh, most people... Actually, I'm not sure if it is most people. I, I would say... Yeah, it's probably more than 50% of Protoss players. They do wall off the Reaper Cliff. And on this map, you can't... Actually, I mean, don't get me tempted, guys. I don't think it's a good idea if I would try to put a factory there. I think it's a little bit too easy to spot. There's better maps for it. We'll save it for the better maps. Actually, one thing. Uh, I made a video the other day on the uh, new announced patch, which was not 100% official, but as far as I know, it was, I don't know, 90% official. Um, there was also a map update so there are going to be new maps and that always makes me very curious you guys know i really like to experiment with new things new units new maps it's always really fun uh, even when i was a pro actually i really enjoyed new maps i feel like most people hated new maps uh and at least, no i shouldn't put it that way most pros hated new maps like i feel like whenever there were new maps coming out the complaints were always plentiful uh, and i kind of get it because the way you play as a pro is you kind of figure out exactly the formula how to play on the map like on this map let's say you're a protoss player here on this map in pvz you want to go for a fast third and and and, and play three oracle into blink and against terran you want to wall the reaper cliff and maybe uh play phoenixes because the drops are really good blah 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 right and people feel comfortable once they figured out how huh why is there what the hell is this why is there three pros? First, I was like, why is there two pros? Well, then there is three pros. Okay, so we are going to get Cannon Rush. This, this, this looks like... I'm sorry, guys. This looks like a massive failure. I, I don't want to be rude, but this is not... There's only one probe inside my base. The probe is going to die, and the Cannon Rush is going to die. And it's, it's, it's going to be a little sad, I think, to be honest. Okay, he's going to get one cannon up. Uh, yeah, I mean... Okay, I don't even know what I was talking about because I was so taken aback by the fact that he went for a cannon rush into my base. I guess I might as well finish my story. What was I talking about? Right, so pro gamers get used to a map and then once they're comfortable, they don't really want to have to do it all over again and get used to another map. But me, on the other hand, I really like experimenting and that is fun. And you know what? I think it was a pretty fun end to the show. I think I'm going to leave it at this for the first episode. I hope you guys really enjoyed my first episode back. Let me... Uh, hear you in the comments what you want to see for those next two series that i'm gonna announce and obviously what you thought if you're happy that i'm back with the extra grid master series hope you guys had a fantastic time make sure to give the video a like subscribe to the channel and i'll see y'all for the next one adios